Oh man, well, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago again. It's morning, morning, morning. <laughs> morning. <laughs> good morning to you again. It's an honor to be back okay. with you again this morning. It's a beautiful Monday morning. We thank the Lord for affording us this uh, wonderful privilege to be able to be here, be in your homes, uh, wherever you are listening to us, um, both here in Trinidad and Tobago and in the nations, different nations of the world. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. And we're here to release the thoughts of the Lord as he breathes into us his mind and an understanding of the times that we are in and the requirement of the Lord. And so we thank God for this moment in our nation, this moment across the earth, and God showing himself strong in the midst of us. And I'm so thankful to God for what he is doing and what he has done and what he will continue to do as we allow him in our own lives individually. And one of the things that is going to be coming out of this, and as we move forward, we will see those who are really true believers in Christ Jesus. Our whole disposition in this hour and in the coming days would, would show how much of Christ is really reigning on the inside of us and the type of mentality that we have allowed, whether we allow him to cultivate the mentality that is that will manifest the type of life that he wants us to walk in in the earth. Uh, these days are going to show this up. It's going to show um, those who are really connected with the Lord and it's going to, yeah, it's going to be a clear demarcation in this moment. And so we thank the Lord for all those of you who are ready to walk in this time of darkness and glorify the Lord, and bring honor to his name. That's what the Father wants, his glory, glorifying him. And so we lift our voices to him this morning and thanking him for being God and being the Father of years and ruling in the earth, ruling in the nations, and we want Him to rule in our lives. You know, He's not going to rule automatically. We have to make the choice to adhere to whatever He says to us and allow His Word and His Spirit by our submission to the Holy Spirit and receiving and obeying what He says to us is going to help us. Um, and He's going to rule in, in and through us. And I was just thinking of we, while we're coming. Uh, on our way down, we were just thinking about um, the essentials, uh, just um, thinking about that. Actually, before I left home, what is essential for us? And what was essential for the Master, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? What was essential to Him and for Him was the will of the Father. And of course, he, one cannot live without food. And Jesus likened the will of the Father as food. He told the disciples, my meat or my food is to do the will of him who, him who sent me and to finish it. And of course, when we uh, think about what the master said, the depth of it, you would understand that one cannot live without food. I mean, that's what we need, the earthly, that which comes from the earth in order for this physical body to live. And that was essential to him the will of the Father, the will of God. And for us, we must understand that what is essential for us, most important to us, above that of natural food, is the will of God. We must never lose sight of that. The will of God must be for us that which is essential. And so, with that understanding, um, the Lord wants us to be able to really get a hold of the season we are in, know the requirement of the Lord, and walk in the strength of it. But before we go further this morning, again, I always like to acknowledge the ruler of the nations, our God, and all those who, are, who have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, your Father, our Father. That's what Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who is in heaven. And so this Father of ours, the most powerful one, the awesome one, and we would run out of words, all the best words in every language and every tongue of men cannot describe, cannot fully describe 
not even 10% of the awesomeness of God. He surpasses them all. So, Father, we thank you this morning yes, that you are the Lord. Yes. You are our God, yes. our Father, the creator and possessor of the heavens and the earth the ruler of the nations. Yes, Thank you for being who you are. Yes. Thank you for ruling in the earth, in the nations, Lord, sovereignly. Yes. Blessed be your name. Yes. And thank you for this privilege. And thank you for your people here in Trinidad and Tobago and your people scattered about the whole earth, Lord. And thank you for the sound of heaven, the trumpet that is being sound in the realm of the spirit, waking up the giant in the earth, your body, <laughs> your church, yes. your bride, Lord yes. Jesus. Yes. We thank you and we honor you <laughs> and we bless your marvelous name. You know, I'll go to God. As I was saying that, I just saw this huge trumpet and almost like I hear the sound echoing and in the midst of a quietness as if like everything was just still. And suddenly there's a blast of this trumpet. And in the stillness, there's a movement of a huge, uh, I, I, I didn't see whether it was a frame of a person, but the movement. And I heard the Lord said, the giant in the earth is rising. <laughs> the giant in the earth is the bride of Christ. Thank you, Lord. The church of Jesus Christ. Whom, of whom all of us as believers in Christ are part of. And this is wonderful. Right. It is wonderful. So what does the Lord want us to know today? He wants us to know that it is important for us, the church community, I'm speaking specifically to the church community today, um, it is important for us to have an accurate understanding of the times that we are in. It is important for us to have an accurate understanding of the times that we're in. Our understanding of this time will help us to know what is required of us, our understanding. So if we don't understand the time, we would not know what is required of us. It's like um, in other nations, you have winter and, 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 and spring and those different seasons. We don't have winter here. But let's suppose that you go into those nations and at winter time you decide that you are going to you're going to um, put on summer clothes the season does not call for that the time does not call for that and it, I mean doing so you would find yourself in a lot of trouble it would not be comfortable you would you're not dressed properly for that time see and as it is in the natural it is also in the spiritual God wants us to have an understanding of the times. He wants us to understand um, what he requires of us in this beautiful season that we are in. And he wants us to be effective. So again, let me repeat. It is important for us to have an accurate understanding of the times that we are in. Our understanding of this time will help us to know what is required of us. I want to keep in mind what is required of us. Understanding of the times has attached to it requirements. And our effectiveness in this time derives from our understanding of it. One of God's requirements of us in this time as the body of Christ is our sanctification, our sanctification. This is huge to God, our sanctification. Not that he didn't require it before, but he wants it to be for us a point of emphasis. You may ask, why? Why is it so important? It is important because it gives the Spirit of God, the right to live His life through us, thereby glorifying God. And we should know that apart from which the work of God is hindered in and through us. 
so we see how important this is. So we, individually, we are vessels through whom God works in the earth. And once we can see ourselves like this, we would understand that sanctification process and the emphasis on sanctification because we are the vessels through whom God works in the earth. So we have a responsibility. And the responsibility we have is to possess our bodies individually in sanctification and honor, as the Apostle Paul alluded to in uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. We have that responsibility. So one of the way that we truly honor God, and we, we can see the, the connection there, that sanctification um, produce honor. It shows that we understand that we belong to him. And the word sanctification means to be set apart. Moving away from everything that is not of God. Everything that displeases God. Everything. And so everything that displeases God in our lives must go and should go. And we should make the necessary choice or choices to ensure that none of those things are allowed to stay. Because we belong to God. And he requires this. So the time that we are in, this is a point of emphasis. One of the things, one of the things that God is requiring of us and he wants us to make mention of today, this morning, is our sanctification. So in your, in your quiet times, because one may say, well, I, you know, I, you know, I really am busy doing this, I'm busy doing that, and I really don't have any, you know, I like to spend time with the Lord, but I have to do this, I have to do that. Now, 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 now. You don't have to do this or that, you're home. <laughs> okay? So you have no excuse now. So don't use the time to be so occupied in the social media, filling your minds with other things. As opposed to taking the time to spend with the Lord as you, you, you know, you said that you had that desire. Now, let it be manifested because now you have the time to do so. And so again, going back to this, the Spirit of the Lord is moving very strongly, breeding this. And I use the word breeding this into our minds, into our hearts. Emphasizing sanctification. God is calling for that. So we have, and I repeat, we have a responsibility to possess our bodies in sanctification and honor. We have that responsibility. And so one of the ways that we honor the Lord is to choose to separate ourselves from everything that is not of God. Choose to separate ourselves from everything that is not of God. So I want to give you something to meditate on during this time while you're home. Over the next few days, I would like you to meditate, meditate on this passage that I, I alluded to a while ago. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And I just let me just look into it briefly and give you a sense as to what is in it. Um, that the Lord wants us to begin to meditate on so that we don't get just caught up in just trying to survive um, and trying to just be alive and to just to live because of all that is happening around you and being moved by fear but understand what he's requiring as a part of the writing on the wall of the circumstances in the earth today that God has changed we will see the manifestation of that however here in first Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, uh, reading from verse 2, For you know what commandment we have given you through the Lord Jesus. Let me read it over. For you know what commandment we have given you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. The will of God, God's will, your sanctification. You being set apart 
from everything that is not of God. It is the will of God. Oftentimes we want to know what is the will of God for our lives. And so God can will many things, places he can live, a uh, place that he may want to live, things that he may want to say. But including in all of that, our sanctification is God's will. He wants us to know that. So let me read it, verse 3 again. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality. In verse 4, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. That each of us should know how to. See, and the Holy Spirit is able to help us to learn how to. Not somebody else's vessel, but our own. Meaning that we choose to. It's a choice that we have made. That we are not going to allow anything else to have dominion in this place. Our lives, our mind. And everything that displeases God is dishonorable to God. And the true sense of honor to God has to do with separation. We, we honor Him by ensuring that all of our person that he alone has the right to that's a choice and a consistent choice that we make and we should make so while we are meditating on these things during this time holy spirit will begin to show us all the things that we've allowed in us that displeases god that he wants out of us because we are the containers of the glory of God in the earth. And all of these things that is not of God are hindrance to the glory of God flowing through us. And they have to go. And we honor God by choosing to get rid of these things. And when we, when we make that choice, that we maintain that position because it is the will of God. So again, verse 4, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor. And he said in verse 5, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles or those who don't know Christ, who do not know God. Again, verse 5, not in passion, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. It ought not to be that way. See? They don't know God. But you do. You and I. We. We belong to Him. And skipping down to verse 7. Because I wanted to, I want you when you, in, your, in your time of meditation, you will just look from verse 1 right down. But because of time, we'll just take a few verses out of this passage. Verse 7. For God did not call us unto uncleanness, but to holiness, but in holiness. So the call of God to us, then the call that we responded to in Christ Jesus, calls for a total separation from everything that does not glorify Him. Therefore, positioning us for the life of God flowing through us and not just in words that we speak but a demonstration of that and sad to say and I've, I run into many of us ever so often and I think after many years there should be some sign of change I mean your attitude still stinks it still it flies is is buzzing around rats and, and, and uh, roaches uh, still buzzing around after so many years a stench coming from you. You know, it's amazing. As as a servant of the Lord, and, and I know God is working on we, we have the, God is working on all of us. Of course He is, but we can choose to to give Him the the right to do certain things, and we can choose to hold on to certain things. And, and many times, as I would come into in contact with others, and I'm not saying this to say that I've arrived. No, He's still working, and I'm allowing Him to work. That's a choice that I've made because I choose to. And I'm amazed as I come in contact with others and they don't know the depth of the, the understanding of, of, of word of knowledge that the Lord has given to me to understand things happening that no one knows of. Even things that people keep in their own heart, it gives off 
an atmosphere that is as amazing and they don't even know that they're carrying that and they don't even know that it is not hidden but how can we allow garbage to to fester you know you 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 leave garbage in your in your house for a while just imagine there's maggots there's there's a stench and this is what happens when things that doesn't please god that is considered as unclean it is not clean it's dirty god didn't call us to uncleanness and so he calls us to cleanness and the cleanness of god is that we separate ourselves from everything that is not of God because God is holy, God is pure, God is clean. And so Him working through us requires of us a certain type of mentality and a stick to itiveness after we would have made the choice to allow the process of sanctification working in us by the Holy Spirit and our adherence to what He says. It, it moves us away from that which is dirty. And of course, if you, if you stumble, you don't want to stay stumbling. You want the stumbling of what is causing the stumbling to be removed. And you're not doing it because this one is watching or what this one will think or what the other one will think. You do because you, you did it because you love God and you understand that this is the will of God. The will of God is our total separation from everything that does not bring glory to God, does not please the Lord. That's what the Apostle Paul was emphasizing. So again, back to verse 7. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. And in verse 8, he put the stamp on it and says this. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Anyone who rejects this, you, you didn't reject man. In other words, you, you're not rejecting me. You're not just re rejecting my words. You are outright rejecting God. <laughs> my goodness, this is strong. So, His will is your sanctif our sanctification. And our sanctification has to do with our consistent obedience to God. Allowing the Holy Spirit to work through us. And when that happens, our attitudes will change our mannerisms will change our response and our responses will change and all the stuff that we have inside of us i mean it's sometimes disfigure people i mean if your face your whole the, the, your whole aura is disfigured by it because we're supposed to be one of people who give off joy and peace and and all of that because that's what the holy spirit is when the holy spirit is allowed to work in us the fruit of the Spirit in us, I mean, you can't miss it. This is what comes out of us. And so, in our time of isolation, temporary isolation, and social distancing, you and God, not anybody else, not, and she need to do this, and he need to do this, and this, no, you and God, everybody else will have to give an account for themselves. Everybody else, all of us, we are free moral agent. We will stand before God and give an account for how we choose to live our lives in the light of all that he said to us. So don't think about anybody else. You do what you're supposed to do and leave it up to you see, God. Don't force anybody. He does. He can if he wants to, but he doesn't. What he does, he shows us the way. This is the way we walk in it. And we as free moral agent has the power to make the choice whether we choose to go in it or not. But if we choose to follow it, there are benefits. If we choose not to, there are consequences. And so you forget about who's not doing this or who should or, or, or who. Uh, no, 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 don't, 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 don't worry. Yourself. Don't, 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 don't let that affect you. You make sure that you allow the cleanness that God is requiring the separation, which is the will of God, to be your way of life from here on. And in so doing, you and I and all those who have made that choice will be the prime vessel, prime vessels for the manifestation of the glory of God in the earth. And so the coming days, that glory that God wants to show forth, that 
awesome, mighty presence of God that we are carriers of through the power and person of the Holy Spirit, He requires that of us. And we honor God, not simply by saying, Lord, we honor you. And of course, we should say that as well. But most importantly, we honor Him by making the choice to separate ourselves from everything that does not please Him. Saying to God, I belong to you. I belong to you alone. Nobody else. And I'm not sharing this house with anybody else. I honor you. I am for you. You are mine and I am yours. And everything that you don't like in me and of me is dishonoring to you. All these things that is this, I want it out of the world. My, my honor to you is I'm all yours. There's nothing of me connected to anyone else, anywhere else. And oh, the glory of his presence. Because he has you, us, for himself. The call that is unto holiness. He has called us in holiness. And he wants us to remove ourselves from uncleanness. So in this time that we're in, one of the things that he's requiring of us is our sanctification. He wants it to be a point of emphasis. Not just be, Lord, I don't want to die from this. and that. Don't get flustered with that. That is passing. That's going. The death of that has been declared in the earth. It is withering. It will die. It will vanish from the earth. It is not a lasting thing forever. The word of the Lord has gone forth against it. And we will see that. So we go further from here. You and God, I and God, us and God. Okay? Our sanctification. Amen. Oh, yes. Thanks to God. The verse, uh, before I get into verse 3, one of the things that uh, stands out for us the moment we accept Christ as our Savior. That one thing, there of course will be others, but one of the main things I should say, we want to know Him. And knowing Him is knowing His will. We've often prayed, Lord, what is your will? What is your heart? What is your desire? And the Bible is filled from Rev um, Genesis to Revelation, gives us, it's filled with, it releases to us as we get into it what the will of God is, what his heart's cry is. So it's easy for us as we begin to read. The Holy Spirit in us allows us, leads us, brings us to the place where we are able to maneuver our way through this life. Verse 3 he says, verse 3 says, sorry, for this is the will of God, our sanctification. And whenever the, the word of God outlines in simple English, brothers and sisters, simple English, the will of God. We must note that. We must note that. Yes. We, we've come to know that God's instructions to us are filled with conditions that we must adhere to because it's in adhering to the conditions that he has laid down we continue to progress. We continue in success. He says this is his will, our sanctification. I'm reminded of another passage that talks about our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit. This precious person, God in the person of the Holy Spirit, dwells in us. So really we share this space with God. You are sharing that space with God. I am sharing this space yes. with God. This body that we, we are housed in. This body is created for us to live in the earth. And we are sharing this space with our Heavenly Father. Verse 5 tells us that... Um, The, sorry, verse, no, before I get to verse 5, he continues to say in verse 4, this is one of the things we should abstain from. 
we still have the freedom to choose. choose yes. It's it, this is my choice. I choose God, and in choosing God, these are the conditions laid down. This is one such condition. As he talks about uh, in verse five, he talks about the Gentiles. The Gentiles do not know God. The world, the rest of the world, do not know God. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. We know God and the will of God as we get to know it and not just get to know it via head knowledge, but because uh, we now practice the words that he released us, this must become my life. The will of God must become in every area my life. The Gentiles who don't know God, they're looking at us, you and me, and this is what will attract them to God, the light that they see in us. We are billboards for God. Mm -hmm. We are the ambassadors of heaven on the earth. So our responsibility is a huge one. We have that awesome responsibility of releasing everything about God, the image and likeness of God, as we develop in ourselves by the power of the Holy Spirit, the, the character of God, by staying with the will that he releases, the will that he releases, his will being released to us. God is holy, he reminds us about that in verse 7. And he calls us to himself, so he calls us to holiness. Yes, yeah. There's nothing else outside, anything outside of that, then we are veered yes, off the yes, path yes. that he has called us onto. Yes. And it's up to us to get back on the path. When we fumble, as Prophet said, and we stumble, we don't stay stumbling. Get back on the path. He has made provision for us. He will not take that away from us. Verse 8, he says, and this is the Holy Spirit speaking through Paul to the church. Yes. The early church. The Thessalonians, he said, who therefore he who rejects this instruction, this teaching, this in our case, this word of God, he who rejects this does not reject man. Paul, could we imagine Paul standing before the Thessalonians yeah. and saying to them, You re if you reject this, you don't reject me. Look past me. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is yeah. from God. This is the Spirit of God speaking through me as um, vessels for Christ, as children of God, we speak, we display, and sometimes, oftentimes, we are called upon to teach all the time, to teach the world, and to use few words. We teach by our example, by the way we live our lives, because we are always under the microscope of the world. They are watching at us. They are watching at us because they desire to see Christ in us. They are seeing something that's attracting them. It's up to us. We understand our responsibility. We understand that the will of God must become our desire, yes. our passion, so that we are drawn to it. And the only thing that we that oozes out of us. The only thing that we release now is the will of God. We want to be in His will. We want to stay in, 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 in the will of God. Not because we want favor. Yes, His favor will come. But we, we just are growing love for Him because in this relationship. Yes, yes, yes. We, we, we just want to please Papa always. Yes. yes, this desire. This desire for Him. We want to please Him. So we stay in that place along that route. And when, we, when he releases what his will is, we are attracted to that and we hold that and we run with it. We live that. So this is one such point that we have to take note of as we continue on our journey with God. Amen. Yes, and you know, it's so amazing, the Apostle Paul, God speaking through the Apostle Paul and really directing the Thessalonians saying, this is what I desire of you. My instructions are meant to lead you in this path. This is my will that I require and I desire your sanctification. My instructions that are coming to you are not just coming to you 
so that you can know them but it's with the intention of sanctifying you setting you apart from everything else that is unclean everything else that is not of me everything else that defiles me and i'm bringing you to that place where image and likeness dwells that place of sanctification that place of being totally separate unto me and reflecting my image and likeness and you know god even today is continuing to require this of us because there's no way we can truly have the impact that we were meant to have in the earth apart from this sanctification process that god is after on the inside of us we can never as it were enter into the fullness of what god desires to do in and through us apart from this sanctification process and as much as we would like to see you know the power of god and all of these awesome things that god promised that he would do in and through us this is one of the first steps that must take place on the inside of us that sanctification that removal of everything that is unclean from the inside of us and the allowing as it were the pre preparing of the vessel as it were for god to use us in whichever way he desires to use us you know it's as though you have the the pipeline and the pipeline is clogged up and the water is god desires that the water passes through the pipeline freely in the amount that it's supposed to but because of the clog it it, it goes through drip 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 mm -hmm. but there are people waiting on the free flow of that water coming through that pipe and so that sanctification process as it will removes every hindrance removes everything that would stop the flow of god's of god's fullness coming through us so god says i want my fullness to come through you to come through my people i want my my all of my life all of my power all of my my graces all of my experiences all of all of the things that i i promised to to you the church community and to mankind to come through you in its fullness but there are some things that must be removed and it's removed through this process of sanctification so god is calling on us to allow this process to take place on the inside of us and how do we allow this process we allow it by submitting ourselves to the word of god what is god what are god's principles what what are the commandments god laid out in his word what are the things that he has said in his word for us to do for us to remove ourselves from for us to partake of all of these things as we submit ourselves to these words we allow that process to take place on the inside of us and it is removing everything that is causing that blockage and we will soon begin to see the free flow and the expression of god flowing through us in the way that it was meant to so if we really desire to see the fullness of god being made manifest in and through us then sanctification is where we start mm -hmm. and even before that you accept by accepting jesus christ as your lord and savior but after that step sanctification is the part that you must take and it isn't just something that that you do when you know you now accept christ and all of that but for each of us no matter how long you're saved god continues to show to us the things that are in our lives that he wants us to be removed you know the actions the attitudes the things that we hold on to the mindsets all of these things he is removing all of those things and it's a continual process that god is working on the inside of us so that his will can flow through us his desires his his power his ability his might can flow through us freely and unhindered mm -hmm. and that is what god desires of us wow, wow. Yes. And, and 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 this is the will of god mm -hmm. yeah and the will is his desire mm -hmm. It is, I wanted to understand what this is. His will is his desire. His will is what he looks for. He finds pleasure in his will. Right. And, and for most of us, if not all of us, we often would say, you know, I just want to do the will of God. Mm -hmm. So here it is now, you know, one of the things that is the will of God and how, oh, how it prepares us. Yes. And not only uh, for just God to manifest his power through us, but it helps us to live the abundant life that Jesus Christ died oh, that we might have. God. We have been saved, for many of us, for many years, yeah. some for 40 years, 50 years, many years, but um, that the abundant life is not being seen. You're always miserable, always there's no there's no visible manifestation of the abundant life 
And the abundant life can only be released through us. We can only enjoy this by allowing the thing that is not of God to leave us. And so, what has to leave us? Everything that is a flesh. That is what it is. The desires, the, the passion and craving of our carnal nature that opposes God. We must choose to allow that stick to itedness, you and God. I don't want anything else between there. And forget about how you used to be. What happened? All of us used to be something negative. All of us came from something negative. All of us, every one of us, may not be the, may not be the same identical thing. But the thing is, are you still continuing in where you used to be? Then if that is happening, you've not allowed that process to take place. There must be change, and a change has to do with our yielding. And oh, how he washes, and he reconfigured, or I like to put it this way, he restructured, or he cultivates our mentality in such a way that we begin to hate the things that he hates and love the things that he loves. And then we begin to express him more. Glory to God. And in the times of darkness, the light of his life becomes most visible in our whole attitude, our whole aura, the very presence of us when we walk into a place individually. There is something that oozes out of your being that fills the place. It is called the presence of God because you've availed yourself and you continue to avail yourself. And there is a peace. You're not easily disturbed. <laughs> There's a peace that you have. There's a peace that you have. Glory to God. And, and your realness is God's life in you. Your realness is God's life. That's a real life. That's, a re that's, what, that's what is real. His life. And oh, what peace we walk in. And oh, what joy we walk in. And what confidence, not in ourselves, the confidence is in Him. And so keep this in mind. The call for us individually the will of god is your sanctification away from keep it before you as you would meditate on this passage over the next few days read one verse stop for a while be prayerful about it read one line stop go over it again if you need to look at the words the meaning of each of the words that you're reading then meditate on it fill, it, fill your minds with it, and understand that anyone who rejects these things, in verse 8, did not reject, uh, they are not rejecting man, they are rejecting God, because it is the desire of God. So in so doing, saints, the joy, the peace, the happiness we should have, the glory of God, when we open our mouths, what comes out? Pearls of wisdom. Life we are life givers. Jesus said out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. We are life givers, not death givers, life givers. That's who we are meant to be. And this sanctification process positions us to be dispensers of the very life of God as children of God. Not, not an overnight thing. Not you trying in yourself by yourself. It is a yielding to God. And that process becomes visible. Every change that happens in the mind is translated into action. It becomes visible. Once the mind has changed, attitude will also change. It's automatic. And this is what Jesus was alluding to when he said, clean the inside of the cup and the dish and the outside will also be clean. The inside will affect the outside. And so, sanctification process that happen on the inside of us. You, God knows you, and you know you. Inside of there, in there, where all the stuff is, all the garbage, the inside there. Oh, well, yeah, because God sees the secret of the heart. He sees it. But he's not condemning you. He wants it out. Because it is hindering what he wants to do through you and me and us to reach out. 
to a dying world who need his life and we are the containers of it. So sanctification, he wants us to know, it's a point of emphasis for each of us. And so you will go and meditate on Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 1 to 8 during this process. And I tell you the truth, if you yield to the understanding that the Lord brings to you, you will be amazed. You will be amazed. When you go back out to congregate with others that you will not be able to see during this period of time, they will discover that you are not the same person that they knew a few days ago. Something has happened and you maintain that position and grow in it. And I tell you, when you come, when you come into something that is unclean, it's going to disturb your being. It's going to feel like, Ew, ick. you know why? Because now you are not filled with cleanness. Because he did not call us unto uncleanness, but holiness. And so, yield to that process. And allow the Lord to do the marvelous work that he desired to do. Father, in Jesus' name, your word has gone forth. It would not return to you void. But it will accomplish what you have purposed it to accomplish. And you will be glorified. So, oh church, let's rise up. We are here this morning because to us, this is essential for us. The Lord wanted us to, because we understand what the will of God is in regard to us being and you being where you are and what is required of us in this season. Let us yield to the process and let the glory of God that ought to be flowing in the earth at this moment through us become our way of life so i say to you this morning peace and strength and grace to you as you go through the rest of the day in the presence of god allow him to do what he has begun you he has begun a good work and you is faithful to complete it glory to god and remember god is bringing us back to this place he's establishing in us his order Amen. Let us continue to submit ourselves to the process and watch God do what he wants to do in and through us. God bless you. Well, TNT, until next week, the Lord's willing, the same station, the same time. It has been a pleasure. And we are here to do what God has asked us to do. Let's do this together. Let's do it for the glory of God and allow our Father to be glorified. Shalom.